Senator Blumenthal, Senator Hawley, Senator Hirono, Senator Padilla, thank you for having me here. I am truly humbled to be here in front of you. My name is Rigel Gupta. I was born and raised in a small town in Oklahoma. I started building apps and websites when I was 10 years old. I'm a hacker at heart, but an entrepreneur by trade. I started building machine learning applications when I was just 15. I went to Yale where I studied machine learning academically. And after graduating, uh, after a couple of years, I started reading papers about what we now call generative AI. In 2017, I founded Deep Media because I knew deepfakes were coming, and I committed my life in that moment to solving the deepfake problem. Ever since then, we have worked tirelessly to make sure that people have technology to solve this problem. But first, before getting into that, I think it's important that we define what a deepfake is. A deepfake is a synthetically manipulated, AI manipulated image, audio, or video that can be used to harm or mislead. This does not cover text, right? Whether you believe that human beings evolved over time or whether we were designed this way, the human mind is hijacked by image, audio, video. And that type of synthetic media content really has the potential to completely dismantle society. I'm not going to go into too much tech detail, but as legislators, if you're going to legislate medicine, you need to know the difference between Tylenol and Tamiflu, right? So I want you to keep three terms in your mind when you're talking about this technology. The first is transformer. It is a type of architecture. The second is a generative adversarial network, a GAN. And then the third is a diffusion model. Those three fundamental technologies are what generative AI is about. That covers about 90% of it. All of these models require massive amounts of compute resources and massive amounts of data. We're talking about millions of identities here. So just keep that in your heads when you're thinking about this technology. We've all talked about how deepfakes are coming and how they're basically here. Uh, but one thing that is, I think, hard for most people to understand just intuitively is scale, right? These deepfakes and these AIs, they're getting really, really good really fast, right? The quality is basically perfect now. They're getting really cheap to produce. Right now, it's about 10 cents per minute for video. That's going down to one cent really, really quickly. And the amount of content, the percentage of content that is on online platforms is approaching as much as 90% by 2030, right? So we all know the harms. It's important you know the scale of these harms. Now, we've already seen them impact the elections, right? We have the deep fakes of President Biden announcing the draft, the deep fakes of President Trump getting arrested, the deep fakes of Hillary Clinton endorsing uh, Governor DeSantis, right? All of those are about political assassination. We are also seeing deep fakes be used to create groundswell support, right? The deep fakes of President Trump with black voters. So it's important to know that these deep fakes are going to be used for political assassination, but also for the opposite, to make politicians seem more relatable. But I think a bigger threat is actually not the fake content. It's what the fake content does to the real content, right? When anything could be fake, you don't know what's real anymore. And so we're going to start seeing plausible deniability come into play here, where politicians or anyone in business or anyone at all could just claim an image, audio, video is a deep fake. And that is fundamentally dangerous. People think that AI is going to be like the Terminator. It is much more likely to create a society like 1984. That's what we need to be worried about when we're talking about deep fakes. But in Silicon Valley, we like to take a solutions approach. So I am here to tell you today that solutions to this exist, but they need to have buy-in from government stakeholders, generative AI companies, the platforms, investigative journalists, even local journalists, and deep fake detection companies themselves. Those five groups of people need to work together to solve this problem. I am proud to say that we have uh, helped people like Donnie O'Sullivan at CNN, Jeff Fowler at Washington Post, and Amanda Florian at Forbes detect and report on deep fakes. We are members of the Witness Organization, an independent group that surfaces deep fake detection to reporters. We are part of the DARPA Semaphore and AI Force program that brings in researchers, corporations, and government resources to solve this problem. We are part of the Content Authority Initiative alongside uh, companies like Adobe that try to label real content and fake content. We also have several of our own committees that we're leading that bring in the deep fake generative AI folks to label their content. 
people in research for detection, and big tech platforms to adopt this technology to keep people safe. I am a believer in the free market. I fundamentally think AI can be used for good. I believe deepfakes represent a market failure. They represent a tragedy of the commons and that this fraud and misinformation is a negative externality and that if we legislate this properly, we can internalize that negative externality and make the AI ecosystem flourish. And with that in mind, I would like to take just a couple of minutes to show you how we can solve the deepfake problem. So I have a couple of slides that I'd like to show you, and I want you to get in the mindset of how does an AI see media, right? That's kind of what we think about. We try and look through the AI's eyes in order to detect it. So again, if we can show the slides here on the screen. Go to the next one, please. Here are some examples of uh, what our system looks like. Again, we are mapping on the left there the proliferation of deepfakes over time, as well as the cost to society if we don't solve this problem. This is cost for fraud, uh, misinformation, uh, and other crimes, right? However, our platform can deliver solutions at scale across image, audio, and video. Next slide, please. Here we see what the, uh, some examples of real content and fake content. Again, it's not just about detecting a deep fake, right? It's being able to detect a deep fake while not saying a real thing is fake, right? That's critical. So our false positive and our false negative rate is very, very low. Um, and if we have a little bit of time, I'd like to show you just how an AI sees audio. We have some images up here, but on the next slide, we're gonna see how an AI sees audio. And this is actually a real piece of audio. Here, that yellow and blue graph, that's what an AI sees. When it's seeing a person's voice and trying to learn from it, it's seeing that. And this is an example of our detectors picking this up as real. And you can fast forward through this. I don't want to take up too much time. But if you want to go to the final slide, that's an actual real political deepfake. Fast forward this one. The illegal Russian. This is a real video. We picked it up as real, right? And the AI is tracking the face. It's picking up certain key points on a person's face. And if you go to the final slide here. This is a deep fake that was produced uh, recently. Uh, and uh, maybe we can just play the whole thing. Hi, I'm Carrie Lake. Subscribe to the Arizona Agenda for hard-hitting real news and a preview of the terrifying artificial intelligence coming your way in the next election. Like this video, which is an AI deep fake the Arizona agenda made to show you just how good this technology is getting. Did you this is the highest quality fake? deep fake made to date. Well, it is using months, detection or generative models that aren't By released the publicly. They use their own detection or sorry, generation models that they created, hyper high quality, and we picked it up, right? So it's about staying on top. At Deep Media, we are both the cat and the mouse in the cat and mouse game. We have generative AI technology, but we don't give it out to people. We keep it internally and use that to train our detectors, and that is why we're here setting the gold standard. So I'm, again, honored to be here and happy to answer any questions. Uh, you all are the policy folks, and I am here to provide as much information as possible about what the solutions from a technical standpoint actually are. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Gupta. Uh, Secretary of State Scam. 